Hey there, let me show you some techniques to read error codes using WinDebug. In WinDebug, often when stepping through code, there are return values from functions which are error codes. It's pretty handy if we can decode those error codes directly within WinDebug. Fortunately, there are some commands in WinDebug which can decode error codes. Let me switch really quickly to an instance of WinDebug in which I have opened a memory dump. I will put the source code to the program that generated this dump in the description below. It's not really that important. All I did was I wrote a program in which it will return uh, certain error codes so that I can show you in WinDebug how to decode those error codes. Any program will do, as long as you get certain kinds of error codes, you can decode it in WinDebug. Let me give you a glimpse of the uh, source code. So basically this short program, all it does is it calls create file and it calls co-initialize. All I'm doing is calling a function intentionally with an error so that I can get the error code. Let me just close the source code because it's not important. If I type dv which is to display the local variables i get to see that there are two variables in this function um, i intentionally did that to get the written value of the functions the first decoding command in windybug is the simplest and the easiest and the one that i use the most which is the error command now errors a plugin so you have to put the exclamation in the front because it's a plugin command so all you got to do is type error space and put the code that you want. So this variable last error equals two. This two is actually an error code. So if I put error two, it will actually decode that error using windows and it will show me a string to represent what that error is. The types of errors that work with the error command is quite diverse. You can decode Win32 errors, you can decode WinSock errors, you can decode anti-status errors, COM errors, and even certain more obscure APIs like Net API. It, I don't really know what the limit of this command is, but give it a try. Anytime you have an error code, just do error space the error code and you might get an output. Now, let me try with the um, H result over here. This HR over here means HResult. That's the return of the COM function. So COM functions are formatted in a different way. Um, let's not worry about that for now. If I do error with the COM return command, I get an actual uh, message over here that says cannot change thread mode after it is set. Uh, that's actually correct. I intentionally wrote an error in my program in order to get the error code so that I could show you that the decoding really does work. Now, within Windows, there is a facility that helps out with these error codes, which is set last error. Win32 API function calls. When you call them, if they have an error, they actually set the last error in a particular memory location. They call a function called set last error. You can actually get that value if you call get last error. So in Windows programming, you often see that if there's an error, you call get last error to get the last error in code. Now, WinDebug has a handy command. If you are at a line of code where you did not call get last error, don't worry. Just run this plugin called GLE. GLE just means get last error. So if I do GLE, what happens is I get the last error. And you can see that the last error value is a specified module could not be found and the code execution cannot proceed because blah, 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 blah. That is exactly correct because again, I took this memory dump at a fake location where I did call the system to do silly things so that I could get the error code. So if you are ever in a breakpoint and you have passed the point of error, you have the error code or you missed the error code, you can do GLE and get the last error code set if the function failed. Now, another handy trick is this. In assembler, whenever a function is called, the return value is actually put as a register. It is the accumulator. The reason for that is the calling convention of native functions, whether it's common call, whether it's standard call, whether it's fast call, always use the accumulator as the return value. So there's another thing you can do. What you can do is you can just type R. Now, these are the registers that appear. EAX, this is the accumulator. E is extended. 
That's because I'm using a 32-bit program. AX means accumulator. This code over here, this is actually the written value of the function. So if the function is returning an error code, you can actually use this in the error command. So I can do error and I can put the symbol for register and I can put EAX. And what will happen is it will decode EAX and I will get the value out here and it will be passed to the error command. And there we are, cannot change trade mode after it has set. That's exactly correct because that's exactly what I did in the function when I took this memory dump. Now you can get a lot of different kinds of errors and you can check them using the error command. But com return functions are actually a bit more sophisticated. So in com, the return value or the h result is actually a compounded number. Part of the number represents the facility and another part of the number actually represents the error code. Decoding the com error is actually a bit more sophisticated. You can use the error command, but you won't get the full description. To get the full description, you have to search for the command in MSDN or you have to use certain tools because there's actually a facility associated with it. H results are represented like this. The topmost bit indicates it's an error. That's why the error codes always have the same first, most significant bit. The bits 16 to 26 are the facility. That's the origin of where the error comes from. The next 16 bits is the actual code. There are a few APIs that can convert from a Win32 error to a COM error. And there are a few APIs that can compare these COM errors so you have to be cautious that even though it's a number, it's not really a singular number. It's a number with a facility and it's packed in. This also brings to some confusion. In WinDebug, if we look at memory of a H result, if we see a zero, that's not false. That's actually true because of the way it is packed. If the most significant bit is success, it will be zero. So if the entire list of bits is zero, that's actually as okay. If it's one, it means as false. As false means success, but no return value. If it is anything but that, then it's an error. This also means that in code, always use the macros succeeded or failed in order to indicate that there is a com success or a com error. Just be cautious though in WinDebug because you don't have that conversion in WinDebug. So if you see a zero for a com function, that's not failure, that's actually success. Now, if you have the error codes in a log file or a text file, it may not be convenient just to open WinDebug and type in error and GLE and check the error codes. You can actually use a tool by Microsoft called the Microsoft Error Lookup Tool. I'll put a link in the description below where you can download this tool. What this tool does, it decodes errors just like the WinDebug error command. Running the tool is pretty simple. Um, there is an, an example down here. You just, just run the executable and put whatever code you want and it will decode the error code. Pretty self-explanatory on how it works. You can, you can download it from, from this site. Um, if you have WinDebug, you can actually even script WinDebug. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to show how to script it here because it's, it's a bit too complicated to script it. I recommend just getting this tool and just running it on the command prompt. Anyway, all the commands that can be used to decode error code, you can actually just take the error code, you can Google it, or you can just paste it in Microsoft's MSDN. It will find a page and decode it as well. A bit more tedious. I prefer to use the tools, but if you have, if the tools don't work, definitely just go to Microsoft website and type in the error code in MSDN and it will search for all pages and hopefully the first page is exactly uh, the decoding of the error code. Anyway, that's a really quick look on how you can decode error codes in WinDebug and using the Microsoft tool. I use it all the time. When I'm debugging, whether it's a live debug or whether it's a memory dump, I always look for the error codes because you never know, you can actually step across a function there could have been an error, there could be no error check, very quick GLE, very quick error check, and I can know, oh yes, that function failed, or something else failed, or the status failed, and it's very quick in debugging if you can just check the error code 
directly within Winnibug. Anyway, gentle reminder to subscribe, give a like and hit that bell icon to be notified of future videos. It's been a pleasure bringing you this information. I am High Voice, signing out.